join with me in the devotion. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you all the way. Join me in Proverbs chapter 14, 5 through 7. A faithful witness, witness does not lie, but a false witness breathes out, out lies. A scoffer seeks wisdom in vain, but knowledge is easy for a man of understanding. Leave, re, leave the presence of a fool, for there you do not meet. Not you do not meet words of knowledge. I have read Proverbs chapter 14, se five through seven. May God have a re may God have a blessing to the readers and doers of His word. Amen. Amen. And glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, I feel better, so much better. Burn us down. 
everyone please bow their heads and close their eyes while I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for everything you did today, Lord. Thank you for waking everybody up and letting them be here today, Lord. Please bless the ones that wanted to be here but couldn't, Lord. Please bless the sick and shut in. Let's just have a wonderful service today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is his name. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Jesus is his name. Provider, provider, provider. Provider, provider, provider. Provider, provider, provider. Jesus is his name. The healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. Jesus is his name. We want to thank you for joining our devotion. We're going to turn the remainder of the program over to the pulpit. And the church say, Amen.
I know we already have our tans, mm -hmm. but enjoy the sun anyway. Yeah. Announcements for July the 10th, 2022. <clears throat> July 31st through August the 6th, 2022, Wolverine State Convention and Congress of Christian Education can be joint annual session in person. Wolverine State Baptist Convention is in Saginaw. And the theme this year is envisioning the future exceptionally through God's promise, sufficiency and sacrifice. Scriptures, John 14, 16 through 18, Romans 5 through 8, 1 Corinthians 13 through 9 and 10, and Philippians 4, 39. So those who are interested in going, I have the, uh, so you know where it is in Saginaw. Uh, prayer meeting and Bible study will resume August the 4th at 6.30 p.m. here at the Mount. Thank you, Sister Wade, for championing the youth summer trip. It was a complete success. Everyone who traveled enjoyed themselves immensely, they tell me. <laughs> Covenant Pastors Fellowship, Wednesday night, church fellowship, July the 13th at 7 p.m. at Christian Tabernacle. Sister Weatherspoon would like to meet everyone after church next Sunday to discuss finalizing the church anniversary program. Are there any other announcements? Do? Oh, okay. I know, we were talking about it this morning in Sunday school. Good morning, Mount Olive again. Good morning. I am coming on behalf of all of uh, the youth department. I'm going to ask y'all to stand. And all of those who went on the trip with us. All of those who went on the trip with us. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. I just want, on behalf of the youth department, I want to thank everybody. Everybody who contributed to the penny jug. Everybody who helped go. For all of y'all who went with us, the children were fantastic. We didn't have any disciplinary issues. They, um, and I just wanted to make sure that we said thank you to y all of you, um, especially those who went with us, Brother Brown for driving, Sister Bessie for keeping them in order on the van, <laughs> and Miss Estelle and Lillian who went with us and had a great time. They had me on a roller coaster screaming for my life. But, <laughs> I just want to thank everybody who went, everybody who contributed, everybody who keeps supporting our youth department. Okay, thank y'all so much. Thank you. Do we have any visitors? <laughs> we, we will have a welcome from high school. Do we have any visitors? Please tell us your your Please tell us your name and in your church if you have one. Well, I'm glad you're here. And everybody else, I'm glad I'm glad you're here. Amen. Now I'm passing now I'm passing it over to the pastor. My dad. <laughs> Dr. K Way. Thank you, Ozzy. Good morning, church. Good morning. God is a good God tell you how he moves and how he grooves in our lives. He poured grace on us last night and let us sleep comfortably. Yeah. If you enjoyed your sleep last night and want to thank God for covering you with safety, raise your hand and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
me tell you something. Yesterday, we left and went out to dinner. Was gone for about an hour and a half. Get home, front door wide open. So Becca grabbed the crutches, goes in the house. Dad, the door open. She went one way, I go the other way. She looking for somebody to fight. <laughs> I said this to say that. Sometimes when we are not careful with ourselves, God still takes care of us from the bottom of our souls to the top of our hard heads. Good morning, Sister Sullivan. Good morning, Sister Monica. Bessie West. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Estelle. Good morning, Lillian of the Valley. <laughs> Good morning, William. Good morning, Brother Slater. Good morning, Janice Williams. Good morning, Sister Roberson. Good morning, Sister Woods. Nah. Good morning, Sister Heron. Good morning. Good morning, Brother Brown. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Westspoon. Good morning. Good morning, Brother Carwood. I did say Sister P, didn't I? Oh, good morning, Sister Patella. <laughs> good morning, Deacon Hanton. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Megan Wade. She can't hear you over there. Good morning. All right. Good morning, Anaya. Good morning, Brother Wade. Good morning, Tyrese. Good morning. <laughs> Who you fuck? Good morning, Gigi. She can't hear you. Good morning, Gigi. <laughs> good morning, Michael Wade. Good morning, Gigi. Rebecca Wade, good morning. Y'all tell Sister Nana Bossa good morning. morning. Y'all tell Brother Trey Savage down in Baytown, Texas, good morning. Let, let me run this. Good morning. Y'all tell Crescenda Wade good morning down in uh. Good morning, morning. Y'all tell Shalonda Weatherspoon good morning. Good morning. Y'all tell Brother Mike Long and Brother George Long good morning. Good morning. Good morning, First Lady. Good morning. So one announcement after service, members, please stay. About 10 minutes, we need to talk about uh, housekeeping and some things that we need to do on the property. Okay? So now I put you back into the hands of our youth.
now in the hands of the ushers. Just hold the book. Put the tray down. Just hold the book. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for being good today, Lord. Please bless the offering we just got, and please bless it for everyone that gave, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sister Monica, she downstairs. Oh, oh, well, Michael's going to do it. Stay down there, boo. So coming to the mic is Michael Wade to read our prayer list. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. Prayer list for July 10th, 2022. Darrell and Michelle Hill, Johnny and Leo Drummer, Anna Constant, Ann Constant, Janice Brown, Gwendolyn Henderson and the entire Henderson family, Katrina Brown, Shirley Patton, Constance Brown, Maggie L. Goodman, Rebecca Tubbs, John R. John R. Brown, Michael Long, Jennifer Kelly, Kennedy Brooks and family, Willie Brown, Ernest, Rob Ernest Robinson, Marquita? Yeah, Marquita. Marquita B Burton, Sil Sylvester J Jameson, Bry Byron, Ro Byron Roberson Jr., Sean Green and family, Anthony C. Roberson, Ida Mae Sullivan and family, Judy Carr, Jamone Peller, Frida Chambers, Anthony Scott, C Cecile Roberson, Bessie West, Sharice Mathis, Murray Banks, Gloria Fords, Ronald Edwards, Regina Ward and family, Janet, Michael, and Maya White, Josh Trinkle and his parents, Mothers of the Church, Mary Jones, Anna Weatherspoon, Avery and, Bra and Brady Reed, Phillips Matt. Matt's name, Diana Jackson and family, Marcella Nolman, Claudia Johnson, Skyla Foster, Carol Peterson, Katria Turner, Stephanie Cooper, Linda Collins, Phyllis and, to and Tony Everett, Kush 
Kashia Lewis Stra Strauss Bell, Lakita Burton, Candace Warren, Darian Tracy Cower, Marion Lizzie Wooten, Latoya Jackson and family, Sabrina and Sabrina Cameron and family, the, Te the Taylor family, Fleta Fleta Addy, Virginia Robinson. Ro Roberson, Cecile Roberson, Orlean Joe Van Horn, Cherie Martin and family. Thank you, Michael. You who are here in this building, if you have someone you need to call out, someone you need to pray for, that you want us to pray for, an issue that is causing you to be distracted. Come on, Sister Woods. That's what I'm waiting on. What's her name? Oh, Bree. Bree. <laughs> oh, okay. Sister Wetherspoon. travel on their move to Kentucky. Yeah, we praying for them. Sister Sullivan. Okay. Sister Wade. Sister Monica. You scaled this for surgery 29th of this month or next month? 29th of August. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Sister Wade. Praying for uh, Kaylin Wade, Isaac. Okay, we're praying for Megan also. Come on, Dee. Psalm 23 said, read this, yeah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yo, yea, though I walk through the, sh the, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let me add Ken Hall to our prayer list because something is going on in his mind that he's lying on his church. So I'm asking God to immediately move in his life and in the lives of those other two individuals who decide to go to court and file lawsuits against us. Come on, Dee, pray for everyone. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Master, we have nothing but thanksgiving unto you, Father, for waking up this morning. Father, we thank you for allowing us to make our first step in a new day because you said every morning is new mercy, Father. And we thank you for your mercy, Father. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for allowing us to to breathe all while we slumber and sleep and being able to wake up and open our eyes one more time. 
Father, we thank you, Father, for allowing us to, to, to just be in your presence right here, right now. Father, we thank you, for, thank you, Father, for in spite of the pain, in spite of the hurt, in spite of all that's going on, you're still right there. You still allow the sun to come up during the, in the day, and you still allow the moon to come up at night. Father, no matter what's going on in our lives, you still allow the grass to turn green in the spring and the snow to come in in the winter. Father, no matter what's going on, you still allow the lights to come on, lights to come on in your name, Father. No matter what's going on, you still allow us to come into your house of worship. Father, you have allowed us to come into your house of worship, worship to give you praise, honor, and glory. Father, we thank you, Father. We know, we know and realize that there are times that we're not able to just walk in a building and praise your name. We appreciate that you allow us to be right here once again right now. Father, we thank you, Father. We thank you for, our, and thank you for the reunion of our brothers and sisters. Father, you said that to, to love our neighbors as much as we love ourselves. Father, we pray that that, that, you, that, that you give us enough love, and you have given us enough love so we can spread to our neighbors generously. Yes. Father, we, 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 we're just a vessel. We're just an instrument, Father. We know that you are the great composer who has written our lives, Father. Yes. You have put a melody in our minds and a song in our hearts, Father. You have given us the gift of being able to, lack, to know and knowledge and have knowledge of your name. Father, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for just taking one more step. We thank you, Father, for breathing one more breath. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to lift our hands one more time. Father, we thank you. We don't have a whole lot. We don't, ha we don't ask for a lot, Father. We just say, but because you have given us so much, we don't, have a, we don't have enough in our being to give you the honest thank you. Amen. Father, we thank you, Master. Yes. We thank you a thousand times in a thousand ways or in a thousand tongues, Father. We thank you. We don't, know, we don't know what else to give you gratitude. We don't know how else to give you honor but to say thank you. We don't know, Father, but we know that you know yes. what we need to know. And you give us what we need to know, Father. Yes. And if all we need to know is what, who you are, what you are, and all we can do is just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Master. Thank you. thank you for one more day. Yes. Thank you for one more time. Yes. Thank you for one more chance to get it right. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you for allowing us to those who are opposers those who are, t are going against us, those who are have anything to say against us, Father, we thank you for the thank you for the action. We thank you, Master, for the pain. We thank you for the joy. We thank you for the laughter. We thank you for the ups and the downs. Yes. Because if it wasn't for the downs, if it wasn't for the pain, and if it wasn't for anything that would hold against us, we would not know who you are. Yes. We would not understand what you can do. And we will not be able to say thank you today. We thank you, Master, one more time, one more day, one more step, one more breath, one more blink, one more sound, one more text. We thank you, Master. We thank you, Jesus. One more time, Father. One more second, Father. We thank you, Jesus. For these are many blessings we ask, and many more we ask, many Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.
tem que coar, hein? So I reached the city all the way in the back. I'm going to ask a question. Kids, if I say cap, no cap, what does that mean? I can't hear you. What? No nonsense. It's no nonsense or is nonsense? No nonsense. Cap is like lying. No cap is not lying. Yeah, we are, uh, you know, I'm educating you while well, I know, but I'm ed asking them so they be involved in this service. Because right. the title of this sermon is Cap or No Cap. Your story has been shaken. Cap or No Cap. Your story has been shaken. So let me ask you this, uh, kids. If one of your friends tells you that they have a hundred dollars in their pocket and you go to the store and you see them pull out their money and all you see is five dollars their action is what if you go to your job and you have a job now you paying you getting fifty dollars an hour and your supervisor tells you you're working 35 hours that week but then comes the, the thursday and he sends you home is his actions cap or not cap Let me tell you, see that she got it wrong. If your supervisor, you making $50 an hour, tells you you're working 40 hours this week, and he sends you home on Thursday, that's 32 hours. Is his actions cap or no cap? Cap. It, what? Yeah, he lied. If you have a girlfriend, Tyrese, and you swing by her house because you're driving your little sports car and there's another car parked at her house and she tells you the guy is her cousin. Is her actions cap or no cap? <laughs> they very much cap, right? He said he's going to drive right on to his next girlfriend. So Tyrese's actions are cap or no cap? <laughs> so let me put this in perspective. Our reference, we're going to be in Joel chapter 2. But our reference scripture is Luke 13, verses 1 through 5. And they read like this. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the sacrifices. And Jesus answered, saying unto them, Suppose you that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they had suffered such a death. I tell you, no. But except you repent, you shall be likewise killed. Are those 18 who was killed by Pilate, are those 18 who, upon whom the Tower of Siloam fell and slew, do you think they were sinners above all men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But except you repent, you shall perish in the same manner. So we're over in Joel chapter 2. And the issue comes from a family that caused Judah to have some issues. The mother's name is Athaliah. So her son, who was Azariah, was the king at 22. So he went out into battle and got killed. So his mama, Alethea, took control of Judah. But when she took control of Judah, she went and killed five of six of her son's children. But she didn't get the one-year-old because the priest, Jehoda, took the one-year-old and hid him in the temple. Were her actions cap or not cap? Because she, did she ascend to the throne in a rightful manner? 
did she treat her family in the same in a rightful, righteous manner? So let me tell you who Alethea's parents were. The king of Israel, the most evil king, was King Amni, who was the king of Israel. Her son was the king of Judah. Uh, Azariah was 22 years old when he ascended to the throne. He held the throne for one year, and he died in battle at the age of 22. So he was only king for some months. Alethea's grandfather was Ahab. You remember who Ahab was, right? You will find Alethea's name over in 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles, and they list her as, the, as an evil woman. Because if you go to Chronicles, you see everybody's name, all the men who had ascended, and this man begot, this man begot, but you see Alethea. Because you see who begot her, you, her son, and you got her name. And then they explain how bad she was. The history goes this way. Alethea ruled for six years. And for six years, Judah followed her. Judah followed all her evil ways. But and while they were still doing everything that Alethea wanted them to do outside of God's will, they still went to the temple and worshiped. They still held the burnt offerings. They still held the wave offerings. They still held the wine offerings as if their relationship was right. Ain't it something that people who come to church have no relationship with God, but they want to walk in like they're here to praise God as, as they want to receive his blessings, but the whole time, don't wave at me, Janice Williams, the whole time, they are just nasty every way they go, inside and outside. Everything that comes in and out of their mouths, they are cap. So here we are in Joel. Joel walks through Judah, and he gives the prophecy prophet, in, in, in chapter 1. He said, let me tell you what's going to happen. What's coming is the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the locust. He said, when they come, they're going to come like an army, and they're going to eat everything. They're going to come in like a dark cloud, and they're going to march in step. I'm paraphrasing from the New Living Translation. He said, there won't be anything for you to do. He said, you need to start to cry like a virgin who just lost her husband on a wedding night. You need to start, he said, drunkards, start crying. Start putting your tears out. Because what needs to happen is you need to repent for all of your cap, all of your nasty actions, all of your lies. He goes on and he tells them there's a way that you can get it right. If you decide to stand with the Lord, you have to let all this other stuff go. He said, but while you still rule in the way you are, you're going to suffer what's coming. Sometimes we don't heed warnings. Sometimes we don't listen to the truth. Sometimes we fall in ranks with people who lie. Let me tell you somebody who lies. Ken Hall. Because his actions are kept, and I'm putting it before God, because that's what we do. All the truth, all the lies, it all has to go before God. Ken Hall hasn't been to this church in over three and a half years. But he wants to call himself chairman of a deacon board. No, not here, because, you know, something's wrong in his mind because he left here and wanted to start his own church. But when you are so devious, when you are, don't have your life held right, you want to do whatever you want to do. The explanation goes this way. Ken Hall was a member here. Ken Hall was asked to fix something. We paid him. The money disappeared. Came back a month later and say, I'm going to 
jazz up your baptism, total baptism up and disappear. Left a note, I quit the church. I'm done with y'all. What I'm trying to say, if your mindset is like, you, you, you want to come up here and do this since you're talking so loud because you're distracting everybody else, madam. After six years of living wrong, God sent Joel to explain to God's children that you need to get it right. That your time is winding up. That the things that you are doing is going to come up and cause you to die. Sometimes we don't listen to God because we see the times are changing. We see things in our lives are falling apart. We see family. We see friends. We see loved ones walking away from us, shutting the door, not wanting to have a relationship with us. But then we want to be like Israel, knowing Alafia was wrong. But we're going to follow her anyway. How many times have you had friends in your life that stabbed you in the back and disappeared for a period of time? And then when they showed back up, did you remember what they did? Or did they act like nothing has ever happened? But being a Christian, but being called by God, we need to have that conversation. Because Jesus said, you need to forgive seven times 70. Yes. That's daily. Yes. But that's not to let yourself be a doormat for other folks to come on and walk on you, to lie on you, to stab you in the back, to cause other folks to lose their relationship with God. And then you still smile in their face. Sometimes you have to make the decision where your relationship lies. Am I going to get closer to God or am I going to hang with these people I know are not right with God? <laughs> Scriptures say that Jehovah did the thing that everybody should have done. He went to Alethea with several other people and got her out of the leadership and put the wife of heir in place. Even though he was in heir placed at seven years old, he ruled Judah for 40 years. When you are in the right mindset with the right people who are in the right relationship with God, you won't believe some nonsense. You won't believe some lies. You won't lockstep with stupid and silly people who think because, oh, I've been at this church 40 years, you're going to do it like I say do it. But I serve the God who raises the sun, who moves the ocean left and right, who tells me I forgive your sins as far as the east is from the west, that I'll be your lawyer in your courtroom, I'll be your doctor in your sick room, I'll be your mind regulator, and I will be the lover of your soul. In Luke 13, Jesus had a conversation with some folks who were blaming the Galileans for dying. Have you ever heard, been in a conversation, folks blame people for the circumstances that they're in. Yeah. Sometimes God puts us in certain circumstances not to kill us, not to beat us down, but to bless us, but to lift us up, but to heal us, to make us stronger so we won't get complacent and think that's the best of life. Yeah. That's what was wrong with Judah. They saw Alethea go up because she had raised her son to be as nasty as his grandfather Ahab. Scripture says that Ahab was worse than all the kings before him. So he tore down all the temples and decided to build groves. When I say build groves, he made his own temples where they were going to worship their own gods. Yes. In the Old Testament, when God made Saul king, he left rules for the king. Yeah, you are in charge, but you are not to oppress the people. Yeah, you are in charge, but you are not supposed to take their land. 
Yeah, you are in charge, but you are not supposed to kill those folk. You're supposed to love them like God loves you and bless you to be the head. Some folks get a title and it goes straight to their empty heads and they lose every bit of Christ that they ever had in them if they had some Christ in them. I know I mentioned Ken Hall because he came here. Folks say, no, he ain't right, don't accept him. As pastor, I don't care what your past is, I have to bring you to the table of Christ. He confessed, I'm going to be better than what I ever was. I'm going to stay at this church. And I'm going to die here and pass away going to bury me. But I'm going to live right with Christ. Right. A lot of people come who are backsliders. A lot of people who are come who are drunkards, who are Gordon tools, who have lost their way. But the moment they walk in the church, people want to remind everybody else about their past, but not their future once they come to the cross. There is an issue with folks who come to church and never focus on God. There's an issue with folks who don't believe that God will judge them for all their actions. There is no last minute prayer. God forgive me of my sins. He'll forgive you. But you got to cash that check that you wrote. Alethea met her end just like she met her grandmother's end. Jezebel who challenged the prophet. If you go through the scriptures, you find out that Jezebel was thrown out of a wonder and her body hit the ground and the scriptures say the dogs ate all of her flesh. Those things that you have done in your past, those caps that you have laid out, you can't go that way. Kids, I said all that to say this, live a life of honor. Live a life holy and acceptable to God and to your parents. But here's the thing. Growing up in church, you see some church folk who don't act right. Some church folk who cuss each other out. And the whole time their testimony is being written in the minds of children. And then when programs come, they want to sing. They want to shout. They want to holler glory, hallelujah. But you acting like just like Judah was. High-sounding cymbals and tinkling brass. God is not going to accept half-hearted folks. Everything you do in your life, you are accountable for. Everything you say, you are accountable for. Every lie you put out in my book, you lie against this church. In Jesus' name, I say return it back to them 70-fold. You lie about this church family. You lie about your own family. I'm asking God to give you your stuff back. Manifest it in your flesh. Sit yourself down, Lord. Sit them down where they can't move, where they can't run, where they can't speak, but only can talk to you. That's in Jesus' name. I'm not cussing nobody out. I'm not calling for nobody to die like folks say. I am not creating a kingdom hall because whoever said that don't have, a nonsense, don't have a common sense or idea what kingdom hall is. But I'm headed and pushing people to get to the kingdom of God because Jesus said if you say their calamity is what, they're in, is, 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 is what caused them to die, you're wrong because he knows our soul. I'm not going to say he knows our heart. He knows our relationship with him. Right. Scriptures say our heart is where our issues of life come from. Right. And those things that we will, those nasty things that we have will come out of our heart and pull out of our venomous mouths. Yeah. We can offer up so many prayers, but if we don't keep the right relationship and do like the disciples did when Jesus say, follow me. Get up, not just w follow him, but walk like he walked. Talk like he talked. Love like he loved. Because he left us two commandments. Love God above everything else on this earth. And love your neighbor. The problem when you get to the second commandment, there's a lot of people who don't like themselves, but think everybody else has to be on that same level and hate themselves. So they spit out venom. 
They think because I've been in the mission, I've been a trustee, I've been in the choir, I've been sitting in the pew, I've been driving a black car, I may think I'm better than everybody else. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. That's why I get up every time I pray. Lord, forgive us of our sins, our trespasses, our transgressions. If Jehovah didn't get up and go to Alethea and take control as a man of God, all of Judah would have suffered. Sometimes the prophecy, the prophets gave out prophecies and Israel, Judah, and the northern kingdom didn't listen. They had over 150 years and they told them, y'all about to be put in captivity in Babylon. A 150 year warning. And what do we do? We ignore it. We stay to ourselves. We stay in our own action. We still living with a cap on our lives. Sometimes when we ask God to clean us up, we have to move like God is cleaning us up. Jesus walking through Jerusalem and the areas for three and a half years, giving people the truth, no cap, healing, blessing, Stepping over barriers for folks to see God. Then you have the scribes, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees constantly capping, constantly lying, constantly trying to switch the word of God at the man who was there when it was created. Doesn't it come strange to you when you know God is blessing you, somebody says something that doesn't add up to what God has told you to do, uh-huh. what God has asked you to walk away from, and what God has asked you to tell him every day. Ain't it crazy that folks will judge you not on how God is moving you, but where you came from. But if you got to talk about my testimony, if you got to walk back over my life and only see the dirt, that means my feet are not on the dirt. Because Jesus, just like the poem said, when you're walking on the sand, in the places where you only see one footstep, that's where the Lord is carrying. Some people want to walk back over your path and say that you're nasty, that you're a liar, that you're a cheat, and then make up other stuff. Educators call that elaboration. But God walks into your life, pours a sprinkle of blood to forgive you of your sins and your faults, and then starts moving you into the right path. So those who are elaborating will become liars. And while God is elaborating in your life, just like David said, he'll lay a table in the presence of your enemies. Fill your cup to the point where it's running over. Instead of them coming to the table to see why, to see where, to see how, to see how deep he is moving in other folks' life, they want to come by and try to pull the tablecloth. Three and a half years, Jesus did his walk. Three and a half years, Jesus walked. Till one day, they came and told him, Your friend Lazarus is dead. Scriptures say Jesus didn't go, but he waited an extra day. Folks say, well, Jesus was was all capped because he knew Lazarus was sick, but he waited. So everything that Jesus did before he got here, while we put Lazarus in the tomb, Jesus is a liar. Scriptures say Jesus went to the tomb and started crying. But when Jesus wept over us, our issues that will kill us, just like Lazarus, he will call out our names. Song says that he knows my name. 
He knows my name because I had a conversation with him long years ago when I asked him to become my Lord and Savior. He knows our name in the middle of the night when we wake up racked with pain, racked with stress, dizzy from headache, from trying to deal with people, trying to love people who is using our love against us. He will come because he knows us. And then not only that, he will relieve us of all our issues. But all we have to do is listen. Doors of the church are open. He knows your name. He knows where you are. He knows what lies you told. He knows how many times you have fallen down. The time now is for you to ask him to help you up. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. And oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me that I am his own. He knows my name. He knows my name, yeah. He knows my name. He knows my name. And oh, how he talks with me. Oh, and oh, how he tells me that I am his friend. Come on, now, you. Yeah. So now I pour. My heart to you. I'm going to ask each one of you to leave your seat. Come put your hand on Anaya because this is the last Sunday we will see her. I'm asking when you put your hands on her, you ask God to bless her every step in her life. Then bless her grandmother and her great-grandmother. Come hug on her. Let her know you love her. Oh, he knows my name. You online, if you don't yeah. know, Anaya's family is moving to Kentucky. He knows my Shalanda, we are praying name. for you and your family. You moving to Oh, too? he knows my name. Come on with them. Well, Will is going with them, too. And oh, how he walks with me. Talks with me. Oh, how he tells me that we all are his own. Gracious Lord, I'm asking right now as we pray for Anaya and her family, and Will, and uh, Shalanda, and Cameron, and Chris, and Big William as they travel these freeways, Lord. We're asking that you pour out your Shekinah glory while you move with them. God, let your Holy Spirit be with them day in and day out. And I'm praying especially for Anaya with her engineering mind, Father. Let her stand head and shoulders above her new classmates. But her and Cameron, Father, on their careers, Cameron to be a chef and Anaya to be an engineer, Father. Of surround them with friends who are saved and sanctified and who will love her as we have loved her. 
Bless all of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank y'all for coming. Come back. Please come back. That way we can we can have a conversation and we can tell you what's going on, how we are growing. You don't see a lot now because summer is here. Everybody vacations. 